did the intro, so. Oh, I kicked it. I'm sorry. That's my bad. Hang on. All right. Okay, you're good. If you... Button has been booped. Okay. Howdy, y'all. I'm Tim, Game Master, Keeper of Dungeons and General Troll, coming at you from Outlaw Moon Games and Toys here at the center of Austin fandom. This week we're talking about animals of various varieties. Um, quite a few games to talk about. First up is Baron Park, a game in which you are building parks for bears. Uh, kind of zoos, more or less, that's specialized solely in bears. Each player is given a little player board, which is kind of where they construct their parks, and they build their parks out of these almost Tetris-shaped pieces that are different habitats and infrastructure buildings and things like that. The game is about scoring points, so creating the most prestigious bear park, more or less. Um, in the base game, you are building habitats for goby bears, polar bears, koala bears, even though they're technically marsupials. Most of them are borderline endangered species to some degree. Uh, it's a game about scoring points and the way you do that is by building these enclosures. There will be stacks of these tiles that have uh, different point values uh, that go get less as you continue building your park. And there are different challenges. So at the end of a round, whoever has like the most space devoted to uh, goby bear enclosures will get a certain amount of points as bonus, or the first to build four uh, polar bear enclosures will, will get bonus points. On your turn, you're basically just placing a tile that you have in your hand for, onto your player board. Your player board is made up of different spaces that have different symbols on them, and when you cover up those symbols with one of these tiles, um, it lets you do one of several actions, mostly taking different kinds of enclosures or expanding your park by getting new uh, or additional player boards. Um, and things like that. Uh, as I said, the base game comes with four different bear types and a certain style of play. It's quick, it's like Tetris, but it also has this expansion, Baron Park, the Bad News Bears. Um, this adds another type of bear, the grizzly bears, who have larger enclosures. It also adds new challenges, that is bonus points and goals, objectives, if you will, um, related to those, this new type of bear. It also adds monorails and different ways of moving people around your park, building little towers that you can then expand or connect with these monorail tracks, which give you additional points. So it adds new ways to play and uh, some new facets to uh, new facets to your strategy if you want to win the game. Shifting focus, we also have, and this has been a hot ticket item, Wingspan from Stonemaier Games. It's been a little bit hard to find, but it's a fantastic game, beautifully illustrated, fantastic artwork. Wingspan is a game in which you are building aviaries or uh, bird sanctuaries, more or less. You're playing as ornithologists, bird watchers, and again, like in Baron Park, you are, uh, each player is given a player board that's divided into different areas, um, sort of woodlands, um, grasslands, and uh, I think swamps. And each of those different terrain types has different birds that want to go to those different um, zones, those different uh, biomes, if you will. And like some other games from Stonemaier Games, it is an engine builder. Stonemaier is the same company that put out Scythe, um, Viticulture, quite a few sort of big name games. Uh, like other Stonemaier games, it has an automata um, or automa, which is sort of a single way to play single player. Um, and it is more or less an engine builder where you are either drawing car bird cards from the deck and each uh, there's a deck of cards that are all different types of birds that have different abilities. Placing birds onto your sanctuary by adding them to these different terrain types and then running your engine more or less. Um, much like Baron Park, the game is about scoring points, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. There are, like in Baron Park, different objectives that you have to score or try to vie for, and the way you do that is just by building up your bird sanctuary, which is a way or method of different methods of scoring points, generating eggs, getting new bird cards, having the most food of different types. Um, there is a sort of food mechanic in here where uh, you can gather food from a dice pool that you have to roll at the start of each round that has different types of food on it. And the way you roll it is by throwing it into this little dice tower that's shaped like a birdhouse. Um, you can sort of see here on the back. Like I said, fantastically illustrated and a very tight game mechanically. It has been extremely popular and highly reviewed. Shifting focus from kind of uh, a sense of realism, conservation of animals, and kind of more or less point scoring games, we have also some RPGs to talk about. 
Both of these are by Plaid Hat Games, who have put out other titles such as Dead of Winter, one of my personal favorite games. Um, these are more or less RPGs in a box, role-playing games where you take on the roles of a particular character um, and play through stories. First up, a slightly older title, Mice and Mystics. This is a game in which there is a kingdom, human kingdom, or humanoid kingdom, whatever race they have buying for there, um, where the champions of that realm have been turned into mice um, and other little woodland creatures. Um, and are now trying to escape the castle, undo the curse upon them, and save their kingdom from annihilation um, at the hands of, a, I think it's an evil queen. Players take on the roles of these different heroes, and they are traveling through uh, the castle as mice. There are expansions for this game that add different stories and have different environments. It is a scenario-driven game, so you are playing through a story, and it can necessarily, like, spoil things for you if you go too far or you play through it once or twice um, and kind of get used to it. There are different characters to try out and things like that and as I said there are other expansions um, but it's more or less an RPG in a box um, where you are trying to defeat the queen's cat, escape from this oversized castle that you knew as humans but now have to navigate as mice and collect all the cheese. It's a cooperative adventure game ages seven up players one through four you can play it single player uh, it says 60 minutes, but with these these kind of plat hat RPGs, I've found that 60 to 90 minutes is if you don't complete a story, but rather a section of a story. Um, that's especially true for the game on the end here, Stuffed Fables, going into the absolute, from the magical to the absolute surreal. In Stuffed Fables, which I've talked to numerous people about several times, you are playing as a little girl's stuffed animals, defending her from her night terrors. You are animated, uh, stuffed bears, rabbits, um, elephants, lions, there's even an old rag doll named Old Stitch, trying to protect your owner from the evil workings of the terrors under her bed. Villain named Crepitus and his minions of sort of mishmash toys. Think Sid's backyard from to the original Toy Story. The interesting thing about this game is it's what Plat Hat calls an adventure book game. So uh, the scenario is made up of different little maps, which are their own pages in each book, and when you move to a different map, you are actually turning the page. Fully sculpted minis in both of these games, uh, wonderfully illustrated. Uh, again, ages 7 up. It says 60 to 90 minutes. That is for if you were playing one or two pages. If you're playing a full story, and this game, I believe, comes with... I want to say seven stories, so seven little mini campaigns to run through. Um, it takes much longer than that. Um, I think an entire story took closer to four hours, but that was playing through a story from start to finish. In this game, like on your turn, you're just grabbing uh, dice from a bag, and the dice are different colors, which uh, correspond to different kinds of actions you can take, and you use those dice to perform different actions, like moving, attacking uh, dark minions, searching for items to help you in your quest, applying them to group tasks that you have challenges you have to uh, pass or succeed in order to move on in your adventure. Um, all the while, um, you are trying to complete these adventures before your little girl wakes up, because that can mean the difference between a happy ending or a not so great ending. And you're basically playing through the, the early childhood years of this little, little girl, important stages in her development, like the first time she sleeps in an adult bed, as, as opposed to a crib. Um, her first day, the night before her first day of school, um, deals with bedwetting, all this kind of thing. So it's a great game for kids uh, and a delightfully charming game that I've actually loved playing through as an RPG. Um, and it just has some great concepts behind it. So from the surrealistic to the realistic, conserving animals, gathering them, scoring points to playing through adventures um, of magic and dreams we have sort of the animal world covered in one way or another. And that's going to be about it for, for these games. As a reminder, uh, every Tuesday and Friday we have our Magic Nights. Every Saturday uh, we have our Open Gaming Days, a um, more organized portion of that starting around 7, um, where you can come in and try these different kinds of games. Yeah, that will be it for this week. Uh, we'll see you next time. Who? What? Kevin Peters from American Horror Story. The kid. No, I've never seen American Horror Story. Never mind. I'm, I don't know.